Let's go G2. What the f now the Antonio looking for a fight. Mickey stunned into the wall, has the flash, puts the Ignite down onto the Antonio who flashes away, as does Ignar. There's the first bit of CC and Ignar is going to pay for Antonio's dive in with his life and the Antonio might be soon to follow. Chaz has so much free time in the top lane, the Lightning Crash coming out, Magnus Sword from Ignar as well, but Broken Blade has already found two out of the fight, they're going to make it three. It's a disaster for Giant X and G2 happily eats up their rewards. I think G2 may be angry today. You cannot prepare for the G2 army. Indeed, the fans got it right. G2 came in really strong here against GX in game one. Guys, one word to describe the action and what we just witnessed in front of their eyes. Bro, they just lost their marbles. Well, yeah. What, what, what did I witness? I feel like GX just lost it themselves. That wasn't That's... one word. That was a extended... I, think, I, would I feel like we need more. That was a word okay. combo. Oh. I comboed many words for one point. Sorry for the combo breaker. I feel like we'll come back to the self-destruction part a bit later, but before that, let's talk about the draft. GX on one side, I was expecting them to make a better use of counter picks that they could have available. What did you guys think about the approach they have here? Finn, you had something to say. Oh, I mean, there's so many top bands going in for this, and then you still end up with a poppy that only pretty much can block Cassante because yeah. sure the pop into Cassante in isolation makes a lot of sense but into Nash, a smolder and Ivern, you don't really have a lot of tools to impact the game I feel like and then they swap her into this bot lane where she's just suffering by herself the entire game and I don't see the plan at all. Yeah I mean I kind of see the plan I just don't think it's a great plan yeah. so the way like Aragon's been talking a lot about the six pick then Antonia has been spamming as well in solo queue and G2 obviously respect that and ban yeah. it themselves as well and you take that into the context of the strategy that GX try to come through with where they just swapped Patrick up towards the top side for him to get solo resources and they probably would have put the six bot side for Antonio Ooh. just to mitigate the pressure from the 2v2 and I think they just came down to a last pick and they said Antonio what can you weak side with the best right now and he said Poppy and because like, I, I don't even know what else comes to mind here because there's no Poppy value but it, even it with, just feels yeah. like a slam pick even with this in mind I don't feel like it's the best combo of champions as we say to execute what GB just talked about right now Finn yeah I mean, I feel like the strategy they came in with, I think you explained pretty clearly, it only really makes sense yeah. if you think your top laner is going to lose no matter what. That is the only reasoning why I think you're going to go in with the strategy, because you're basically sacrificing all agency on your top laner to funnel a little bit of extra XP to your AD carry. And I think their logic was that eventually they will swap the Astro back into the bot lane and play the yeah. 2v2, but this just never happened because of the 2v2 kill in the bot lane. Yeah, I think it says so many things. I think we all anticipated that BB, of course, is a favorite going up against uh, uh, Antonio, but we also know that the GX bot lane has had some high highs. And while on a consistent basis, Handsome and Mickey has probably looked better, I still think coming into a game like this, you want your bot lane to say, yeah, we can 2v2 them. Yeah, we can play through it. And I think it really limited them. The fact that also Igna just had to sit around with a poppy down in the bot side and not be able to roam the map where Jackie's was very close as well multiple times to to try and get their hand on, on caps but they just weren't able to because there's no one else to exist on that let's look at some specific uh, map movements actually and what G2 has planned here against GX because on top of not having the assignment oy, you're oy, wishing oy. to have here you clearly not don't have any room to breathe Finn yeah so here GX goes for this dive very late the the poppy tp comes in very very late but they still think they cut the the cost sunk fallacy is that they still want to go for the dive, but the reality is that the wave is already dead, and Cassante has all his spells available to block the initial damage, so he takes so much time to die that his team is able to come here and help him clean up the skill. And this just blows the game completely open, because after this, there's a Cassante with a million armor on the enemy team, there's a Brown that's just a double kill for some reason, well played mm. to Mickey, <laughs> and I just feel like this is where the game completely fell apart for GX. Yeah, I mean... I I'm just baffled, right? Because it felt like GX just did all these things to themselves. I don't think, despite how big of a stomp this was from G2, that they did anything special. They just played normal League of Legends, and it was really just GX who was kind of just moving it down. Hello, Mirror and Skorky. Um, but anyways... <laughs> Maybe, it, uh, I don't know, we'll yeah, see. It's not a sign to come, we'll but I still think it's the <laughs> fact that I think GX needs to play some normal League of Legends because even this dive here just screamed desperation. They lost the top tower. Caps just get whatever he wants for free up there. You lose so much of your goal down towards the bot side. It was just a losing play through and through yeah. and not a good thing to go for. Before resetting for the new game, I would love to have site selection, actually. I, I don't think I've heard it, but what do you, 
red side for GX yet again. So better use of the opportunities they can have. Yeah, look at this. That's a crushing defeat decided within the first 40 minutes of the game. Finn, what do you want to see from GX in game two? I just want to see Antonio in a tank in the side lane, and I need you to put more emphasis on Patrick and Jackie. Just give them the jungle ganks. Just give them the support roams. Just let top lane be top lane. Like, I don't think Antonio is going to go so far behind against Broken Lane. You don't have to do these rocade or something and uh, just put him in the bot lane. Just let him play up there and just play more standardized. Surely can only improve after a game like this. Lots of things to learn. Even my Apple pen just doesn't understand. Everything is a chaos. Anyway, everything <laughs> is a chaos. And let's send it over to Kester. So <laughs> take it away, please. I'm out. <laughs> Everything's a chaos. Everything's a chaos, it seems. And the only thing that hasn't been chaotic today is G2 winning. You know, it was relatively clean after that dive. They just managed to close out. <laughs> you okay so why are you just I leaning? Oh, is this a jealousy thing? No, it's, it's a weird. That's what's thing. happened. It's like, oh. I, he's not. A, he's a human being, not an armrest. <laughs> 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 you know? He leans on me when yeah. I, I feel sad. I think you have to beat him. Oh, oh yeah, I did. I beat him in Smash Bros. Game, I played like five one games in my game. life. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was about as one side <laughs> as that first game, wasn't it? Uh, I, that's objectively not true. <laughs> uh, I have no proof. I two stocked Mikkel as now, well. That's the big let's one. jump into the draft. We don't need to leave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, let's talk about League of Legends. Let's not overcomplicate it, Giant X. Let's keep it simple. I think that uh, they cooked a little too hard in game one, and I think they find themselves in a position where they uh, ended up falling short. My biggest concern for Giant X is, is this macro? I think in the mid game, G2 just has a much greater understanding of how to play the map. And Giant X need to find a solve for this, whether that be creating more chaos, introducing more volatility, trying to force more skirmishes. The problem is that style of play just isn't how we think of Giant X as a team. So I'm fascinated to see how they solve this problem because G2 were expected to come in as the favorites. They absolutely demolished in game one and uh, Giant X need to show something very different here in game two to shift that perspective. On G2 side, they don't have to show anything different. So they're going to stick with the exact same bands we had in the first one. The Ivern going to be taken away? Well, it's, I still think you go for, oh, I was going to say yeah, Ash first pick here with the Braum gone as well. So at least they think, hey, if we get the Maokai Rel trade here, we still have a, a decent answer into it. So do G2? No, they're not even going to swap it up. So I imagine we'll see the Maokai Rail taken here again. That definitely makes sense. Braum very good at stopping that sort of engage. Might see G2 having a oh. little bit more engage on their side as well. MF, the lock here though instead. Obviously Braum a counter to that misfortune ultimate. I also think it just gives you a slightly stronger bot lane two versus two. They can just secure the rail. I think this makes sense. Already an effective combo. I'm curious as to how G2 will respond. We haven't seen Melio for a while, but I do think that the pairing can be quite effective into this bot lane 2v2. Whether we will see it, I think Leona is kind of the more meta expected choice, unless they want to go for Alistair, something a little bit more defensive. Um, however, they could lock in Sejuani or something if they want to just get a tanky jungler. Um, G2 have a lot of options. <laughs> Maokai will be there, Maokai, jungle. Yeah. Can be played support, but don't... I mean, you can actually into the realm, knock her out of her crash down with Bramble Smash with the Q. So it's a possibility. We haven't seen it as much recently. I would imagine they'll probably take something for Caps here, because it's... Oh, Ooh, Poppy Oh, it'll be Poppy Support. Because I was about to yeah. say, you have the Poppy as well, and you can go for a ton of options like Fiona, Poppy, Alistair, that all do well into Rel. So I thought they'd leave support till that next rotation and try and secure Caps a good matchup, but... I mean, they could still have left support for that next rotation. Broken Blade does play a lot of Poppy as well, so it might just be a multi-role flex option. On the likely pick here for Giant X, put, something, put the Antonio on something he's very comfortable on. You've already got rid of the Braum, so you know you're going to have a little bit more long-range, non-committal engage, which seems to be the name of the game in a lot of League of Legends, especially in the LEC right now. Now, you would expect the Aatrox to come out as a ban. Maybe even the Cassante to follow if they want to try and mitigate Broken Blade's options in the top lane. Remember that Broken Blade has a uh, very deep champion pool. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff that he could come up with depending on the direction that G2 want to go. If they want a little bit more range, they could consider something like Jace, they could do Renekton. 
So I won't delve too deep. Meanwhile, G2 gonna look to ban out some jungle options. Lily are gonna be taken away. Sejuani might be the next champion to follow to kind of put some pressure on Juhan as to what he can bring out in that role. Notice that a lot of G2's focus has actually been on Juhan with the Nidalee taken away, the Vi as well. I think that it does make sense when we think about Johan as a player, kind of the quiet carry of the roster, a large responsibility of being able to make things happen for the team. As uh, Giant X is going to run out there, second man phase with an Azir. Give me the Amumu ban. I want it to happen, because <laughs> I think it's a good setup here. I mean, Curse the Sad Bullet Time is available. You've got a, already, you kind of want that AP jungler here as well. And then you just end up with counterpick for Jackies in the, uh, yeah. the mid lane, but maybe tending away from the tanks here. An AP threat in the jungle would make sense as well. We did, as you say, see the Lydia band away already. Talia kind of fits that role for Giant X, but it looks like it might be the brand, which does make me sad because it would have been... Oh, Karthus? You're falling brand. for the... Why? Hovers, man. You know this. Brand. <laughs> brand. There we are. Because I would have liked the, like, the call of the sad bullet magnet storm. Which would have been the full name of that combination, yeah. right? Because you've got Call of Forge, of got course, everything yeah, else. No. But instead now, we have the Call of the Pyroclasmic Magnet Bullet Time. Because Pyroclasm is Brand's ultimate yeah, yeah. The... Right. Yeah? Yeah, no, I get I'm you. I'm expecting both of you to shout that in the middle yeah. of team fights. Yeah, I might go acronyms <laughs> instead, you know, just yeah. you know, go with that. Instead. Yone! Uh, okay, now I'm assuming that this Yone is going top, but we know that Corky top is something that Broken Blade had to deal with last week when playing against MDK. So I wonder if he is going to be bringing that champion out. But strong scaling on the side of G2. They have a strong side lane option and something that, well, the analyst desk has consistently talked about when it comes to playing against Giant X is their composition style is very exploitable. And uh, Yone is a great example of being able to exploit them. A strong side lane threat that no one can really match. Because you look at Giant X's composition and you say, who can go against Yone when he's at three items in a side lane, right? And it's a win condition that G2 will always have in their back pocket if things don't go right in the early game. Also gives them a little bit more damage across the entire team. If that was a tank, you only have the Corky and the Ash, predominantly physical damage. He only does do quite a lot of magic damage with his passive, so even though he is, you know, mostly physical damage, you do split that up just a little bit. I think it also just gives G2 a huge amount of threat for side lanes, which is going to be super nice, because essentially you've got push in mid, push on boss. You should, well, eventually that push on bot. So you're gonna be in a position where you should be able to start to set up for early objective control around dragon. And then when you get to the later portion of the game, just take towers in lieu of giving those dragons across to Giant X and try and avoid the team fight because Giant X are terrifying in a full on 5v5. So I think it'll be on G2 to get early leads and then try and dissuade any sort of engage coming through. Well, Giant X have definitely changed things up a little bit. Carry jungler for Juhan. Something we don't often get to see from him. And uh, it'll complement their team fighting abilities nicely. They've got a great wombo combo. Medic has already named it. Call of the Pyroclasm Magnet Bullet Time. Yeah, but we need True Shot Barrage in there now as well. Okay, well, you can cook on that. But the point is the that a 5v5 is something time. that they will Rolls want off. to get. So let's see if they can get to that point or if G2 can bring us to 2 and 0. That is the question. G2 dominant in game one, Giant X. Changing things up a little bit in game two, still on the red side, but bringing the AP jungle out for Juhan. But what you guys have to remember is that if you're a master of the Rift and if you never miss a game, Santa Dare's here to reward you. Head over to SantaDareGaming.com to win weekly and monthly rewards like Hextech chests and skins. This week's code is LEGEND15. That's LEGEND15. I can't co say if that is correct or not, because my European is, like, yeah. is correct, yeah. <laughs> Although I think Sin would be better, because the Z has more of a tease at Sin. The like person Zeitung. who's German you can't trust is Hysterics. <laughs> so that is you very true. You cannot trust him at all, no <laughs> matter what he tells you. Hysterics has is that it, sometimes he just tries to speak German and Chinese comes out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had that a bunch in, in high school, because I did Spanish in middle school. And then I, I submitted, I had to do high school French for like IB, and I submitted a paper, and my teacher looked at it and said, what on earth is muy caliente? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm really sorry, I just went into Spanish. Do you know what the most evil sorry. thing that they do for the Leaving in Ireland is? They have both of your speaking tests for your Irish and for your German or your Spanish or your French, mm. whatever you're learning the next day. Oh. So you have to just like reprogram your brain right into the entire other language that you don't speak. <laughs> well, yeah. 
I think you're meant to be able to speak the language. That's kind no. of the point of learning in school, but we'll see if uh, Giant X can speak a different language than they did in game one. Changed up the draft a little bit. Looks like Juan actually went for a Razor Beak into blue clear here. Gets the level two, will be able to stack his passive. Assuming he took the uh, Ability Haste Shard. Might be looking for a fast level three, then look for something like a gank bot. Um, we'll see what he cooks up here. Is Yike just leisurely clears through his jungle. We're gonna start on the top side, pathing towards bot. Um, Broken Blade already gonna get a bit of push towards the top side of the map. Mid, back and forth, Corky is real. Nothing too crazy. But this bot side of the map is the interesting one. Oh. It's okay. not gonna spot him out. So it spots that the blue was done, and then a question mark ping comes onto the Grump. And then an answering ping from G2 on the Razor Beaks. So I think G2 might be a little confused as to exactly where Juhan is right now with I the mean, Hawk Shot. They should be able to determine, because they saw red and they saw Krog. So with the Raptors gone and with blue gone, they're like, he has to be bot side right yeah. now, right? So um, I don't know if they're going to do much with that information, though. Keep track of Broken Blade. He's going to drop a ward. At, he's going to confirm the information for G2 right now. He's going to move in, drop a ward on Krugs. And now, unless Juhan does something sneaky, while the Cheetah recall comes through from Broken Blades, nothing too crazy going to happen. Jackie's already very low on mana. Did just pop a biscuit to get some of that back. But, and uh, he'll level up in a couple of minions as well. Two pushing lanes now for G2. Of course, on the Maokai. We've seen Yike use Maokai to do some crazy stuff in the early game, but against a brand, he's saying, you know what, I'm not going to risk that, not going to play with that too much, not going to play with fire, as uh, the old adage goes. Mm -hmm. If you'd done it, if you said it on the first line, I'd be much more impressed than building yourself into it, then realizing there was a good joke there. Joke is just very helpful advice. Mm -hmm. Don't play with fire. Or run with scissors, you know. Or run with scissors, which is crazy it's, because it's we, the have level of knowledge we, we have, feel the we have Brand needs. and Gwen. Yeah, I feel yeah. like the League of Legends is giving very mixed signals. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps the argument is unless you're a trained professional. Yeah, none of us are trained professionals, yeah. and I'm allowed to play Gwen. So. <laughs> it's, it's impressive that Gwen got her license of professional yeah. scissor running <laughs> so quickly when she became a doll. For the moment, though. Much ado about nothing on the rift. You can see Broken Blade, as you say, got that cheetah recall off, just pushed out the wave and then reset. He's gone for a cull. Jackies and Caps constantly trading in the mid lane. Caps steps to the side of the Mystic Shop. Still hits with a Phosphorus Bomb. The wave is pushing in towards him. Uh, Yike is clearing through his Gromp, but spotted on Vision as well. For Caps, though, he does have the Fleet Footwork and an extra Biscuit in pocket, though. So Jackie's not being able to finish this off. You can see it's Caps who's now starting to outpace him when it comes towards the health bar. So maybe a little bit of a tension from Yike in towards that mid lane may not go astray, but we'll have to see if that's going to be the plan. It looks like Juhan might even be coming across here to cover for that potential play. Both the jungle has been tracked really well on Vision throughout this entire early game. Uh, it looks like Jackie's is just going to back Juhan. Well, you can't start the Drake because it's not up for four seconds time, but now he's walking back towards his Gromp. His bot lane has just reset as well. Ignat working his way out on the map, and it looks like it is going to be an early Drake hit from Giant X. I do like the thought process from Giant X. Jackie's is now reset, Caps hasn't, so you can try and take that away. Because one of the things I think Giant X's win con is, is forcing fights at this dragon in the later portion of the game. By getting and stacking them earlier, it means that G2 can operate less on the map and are forced to take that fight earlier. And I think for G2, they would have liked to kind of build that timing window where they had 10 minutes, say, before they really had to fight at a dragon and could trade for turps on side. But I think you're going to find Ignar. We just back away. I think Ignar was setting up in case someone, you know, tried to walk through the gate where he's just walked through that little funnel point because then he could flank them and perhaps you can find someone. But in the end, it doesn't really manage to uh, enact anything there. Mickey checking the bushes. Jackie's down to about half HP as Broken Blade hits level six. Well, unbind his soul and then snap back to reality as uh, he has just got that slight advantage on the Antonio in topside. Oh, there goes Captain. He's moving over towards Void Grubs. He's going to be able to steal these away as well. So yeah. nice set up here for G2 in the early stages of the game. Mom spaghetti. I was <laughs> like, how long are those you going to keep just saying M and M Larry? At least mine was game well originally. Yourself. Also, yeah, you're the rapper amongst us, yeah. buddy. I've had your Christmas gifts. They're very well wrapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as good as my Gwen joke from yesterday. Oh, true. Um, 
Caps in some trouble. Oh, yeah, Duran Zay lands the stun, doesn't quite get the passive down, but Caps even with a flash touches the Mystic Shot, is able to just survive. Knight coming in from the side as well. I'm not sure he wants much more of this. He does manage to land onto Jackies, who still has a flash. Yike now hits the level six off the minions, but he's gonna die to the Pyroclasm! Juhan takes the kill, Yike overstepping. I'm surprised that he thought he had the damage to win that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yeah, fair play to Yike. Yeah, I respect the ambition, I guess. The strategy was good. But uh, yeah, just not enough damage on the Maokai. And Giantx say, okay, sure, we'll take first blood. Goes over to the brand. Small advantage gained and honestly just a nice punish on the Caps who didn't expect Juhan to be on that top side brush. They find a nice stun. They get the summoner out from him. And uh, Giant X now with a very small lead. Well, actually, no, they're still overall behind, <laughs> but uh, their jungler at the very least finds himself in a, in a good spot. It looked like Yike expected Caps to be able to follow up, but with how low he is, I really don't think Caps was in a position to do so. So it means that Giant X will at least get one off the back of that. So something going their way in the early stages, but it is still a 1k gold lead in favor of G2. And Yike not having that ultimate down, now it might lead to a little bit more activity, let's say, from Juhan, where he might be able to try and use the fact he's just ticked over to six to find advantages in towards bot lane, which is where he's positioned at the moment. But most of that lead for G2 was on both played in the top lane. It has been a 1v1, basically in isolation for much of the game. And the issue for the Antonio is you can get a Bramble Vest, you can try and negate some of the healing coming out of the Yone, but it doesn't help with his auto attacks. 50% of those auto attacks are magic damage, scaling off your AD as well. So even if you build, you know, armor to try and deal with the physical damage in the lane from the rest of his skills, you're still going to be getting chunked out by that magic damage. Ignore six here. There's a great ward in the bot side jungle of G2. I think it might have just spotted out Mickey. And if you end up spotting, you know, the support roaming towards mid, I think you can open up for some of these flash plays on towards Ham Sam if you overstays, because this is something G2 do a lot, which is have Mickey reset very early and try and get him out onto the map first. But it does leave Han Sam vulnerable at times with Patrick. Ooh, has to use the cleanse. Nasty trade there. Patrick really couldn't do much oh, about Mickey. it. Oh, uh, yeah, Patrick's dead. He's got the flash, but Mickey would knock him into the wall and then with a hail of blades and a hammer shot combo. Mickey takes the kill. Patrick did have the flash, but even if he did, I don't know if he was getting away from yeah, that. He, he kind of had to flash it perfectly so that as the E came in, he could flash away. But yeah, that was always going to be an ambitious thing to be able to do. So G2 equalized the kills. But uh, I think the bigger problem for Giant X is, once again, Han Summers just had free reign on this tower. He secures himself a plate. He's now in a very healthy gold lead. Top, as you already mentioned, in the same position. So even though Juhan gets a little bit accelerated after securing that first blood, you look at the atomization, still very similar. Giant X now find themselves overall behind in this early game. Very early lane swap from Giant X as well. They, I feel like you should do this for, you know, point grubs that are coming up, but you're still 40 seconds away from that. So you can actually try and match that if you really want to. It looks like BB can even stick around here. But yeah, I think they're just a little early on this because you're going to get the push on boss. Then G2 can even walk up and try and contest or they just steal the dragon for themselves on bottom side. So I think it's a bit of an unusual play here from Giant X. So I think they want to try and contest G2 from getting six scrubs. Obviously, six scrubs with a Yone in a side lane later on will just melt through towers. But as you say, you give up pressure around that dragon towards the bottom side. It is very early from them as well. G2 are able to get the push through mid and Broken Blade it, happy to accept this wave a little bit further back and isn't really at any threat from Patrick and Ignar. It's also because G2 can kind of play with four and a third man as well, because Hansama's ultimate is going to be up, but the Antonio doesn't have the luxury of his teleport. So when G2 take these fights, an Ash Arrow from downtown right up through river could end up catching people out. Looks like that's what G2 might try and play for here. Giant X currently grouped up around those grubs. Broken Blade has the ability to jump in. There's the ammo. Oh, just in the gap. Nature's Grass coming out as well. Ignar tanks it up for the moment. Jackie's putting some damage down, but Broken Blade dives in. And Ignar almost dies. Yike flashes for him, can't quite get it. Mickey down to half HP as well. Yike going back in with a twisted advance, but he's been abandoned by the rest of G2. And the flash forward was a flash to his demise. Giant X find one. Feels like Yike just separated in the thought process from the rest of the team. Tried to get the kill, but only put himself in harm's way. And Giant X now get 
not only the kill, but will get those boy grubs off the back of us. Miss execution on the fight, or maybe just a miscalculation is a better word for it, because Ignar, he just tanks so much, and he's able to get away, and then Yike flashes after him, at the very least trying to get that kill, but now G2 kind of run out of juice. They have nothing left to follow up with the rest of the fight, which means the Giant X is actually able to turn around, get a kill, and deny the grub stacking for G2. But it's not the first time, even in this, well, in general, but in this game, we've seen Yike a bit separated from what the rest of the team's thought process was, because the ult goes wide, and this looks like a decent start here for Giant X. Mickey trying to zone off as Broken Blade goes in onto Ignar, but can't quite get the kill at the flash away. But now they're completely separated, because BB had to go back to the solo unbound. Mickey was too low to follow up, and Caps was never really in a position to follow in towards that fight. You can see there, Annoyance has zone face as well. Yep. A bit of a struggle for Yike over the last couple of weeks. Magnus Storm onto Mickey here, catches him out. He'll flash across the wall, but that miscoordination is something we have seen from G2 and something specifically we've seen from Yike over the season finals. Against MDK, he really struggled to have an impact in the game. Part of that obviously is in most of the drafts, he didn't have pushing lanes and it's much harder as a jungler to impact the map early on if you your lanes aren't there to help you. But I think calling attention to the fact that Yike's been struggling isn't doing him a disservice. I very much agree. Uh, game one, I think he played very well, um, but highlighting that he has been a little bit disconnected. Either way, I think in that fight specifically, that wasn't entirely his fault, to sure. his credit, but mainly because he was following up with the, the criticism he would throw is the follow-up flash onto Ignar, right, to try and help secure that kill, because once you flash in, even if you get that kill, what happens next, yeah. right? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's um, it's something that we'll have to keep track of, because I think that Yike, he came on to G2 with a lot of pressure on his shoulders, having to fill the role of Yankos, a, a tried and tested and, and veteran player in the seed. Um, but I think he filled those shoes very well last year and the expectations and responsibilities are very very high so when of course you do make those mistakes there is a big magnifying glass on it especially when uh, g2 is expected to represent um europe at worlds this year i so, mean they will represent I mean, yes of course uh, already have at least a third seed guaranteed they fall out of the bracket now it will be just the two finalists in munich joining them if G2 make it further, perhaps it will be our top three. Basically, if G2 get one of our top three spots, then the other two teams in the top three will join them. And if they don't, only our top two will go. Broken Blade is the player with the biggest lead on G2 right now. This Yone, a very effective answer into the Yawn. And with the play with Rinkin completed, he has some very serious kill threat in that matchup as well. I think the first item being completed across the board is a good setup for G2 here. They look for the engage, the arrow going down as well, and Juhan is locked up and doesn't have a moment to breathe before he dies. Ignar will follow suit as G2 find two. I mean, the coordination that we criticized G G2 before four, that was a great example of it. Uh, just very well executed, the hex flash from Mickey. Jackie's can buff the arcane shift away. The Antonio, is his fate sealed here? I don't quite think so. Broken Blade will dash back to the Soul Unbound. Good timing window from G2 to punish as they're going to look for Jackie's again. Knock Jackie up, still has flash here. Arcane shifts away. Mickey falls first. Flash away, but Caps is there for the chase. The final couple of autos will put Jackie's in his place. G2 playing all over the map as Broken Blade continues to dive. The Antonio on the bottom side. The Rift held secured as well. The Antonio trying to flash away. Broken Blade snaps back and will get some more damage on this tower as the Antonio has to limp to safety. Tower in the top lane falls. G2 finds three kills. Things are very quickly falling out of Giant X's hands. They had some promising opportunities in the early game, but uh, G2 very quickly taking control over the map. Yeah, it's been <laughs> a little bit off over the joint, I will say, but still G2 are starting to get that control. Now pushing in towards mid lane. How about Mickey just waiting off on the sides here to make sure he's all fine if Jackie's does try to go forward on this, but Hans should there you go, just finish off the tower. Yeah, a couple of minutes ago it was a 1,000 gold lead. Uh, for G2. It's now about 6,000, uh, just over five. So we'll see this engage again. I mean, the coordination was great there. Mickey catches out Juhan. He then gets followed up with the Ash Arrow, followed up by the Maokai Ultimate, and then Caps was like, yeah, I've got the damage. I can help out there. And uh, just great coordination from G2 overall to punish Giant X on the setup. They ended up conceding the Herald, which didn't end up being used to secure that mid tower. 
I'm a little surprised that they sent Broken Blade back towards top. I would have thought that they would keep him bot just because of how hard he's winning in the side lane. And that tower is just sure to fall. But I guess they trust in Caps to be able to chip away at it more reliably just because he's that ranged champion. Ultimately, G2 have the freedom to kind of do whatever they want given the lead that they have. Yeah, and BB has TP for the Dragon in a minute and a half as well. So you're going to get that side lane pressure and should be able to try and keep that pressure up on this bottom half of the map as well. Nikki just ho hovering off to the side here, trying to see if he can get into position, but yeah, I think Jackie's going to be able to clear this out. So it won't get the terror before that object spawns, but I still think they should be able to push in and get some vision control and river before the dragon spawns. Now remember that G2 don't even have to win this game through team fighting. Uh, if they really want to play this super cleanly, they would avoid giving Giant X a 5v5 ever. Mm -hmm. Just use your Yone to win the game a side lane alone. Create that constant point of pressure and then maybe TP in to create a numbers advantage, force a pick, maybe fight 4v4 without the Yone there. They have a lot of options as long as they can utilize Broken Blade effectively. I think alongside that, you have a 2,000 gold lead on Caps and 1.3k on Han Sama, right? So even if you do end up taking a team fight, it's likely to go in G2's favor. The only threat really is Juhan, who has that Pyroclasm and the Leandries. Antonio struggling in the top lane, even under the safety of his tier two. He's down to half HP, just trying to deal with Broken Blade. And GX are going to be drawn around the map now. You have a Rift Tower that could potentially go mid and take a tier two, or you can put that pressure onto the bottom side, and Giant X looking to try and defend the bot lane play. Now, with the Antonio resetting, opens up Broken Blade to just take that turret in the top side. The, the lane is just not going well for Giant X. It's really starting to hurt them. G2 will step away a little bit as Broken Blade starts to chip away at the top tier 2. Now they see the Antonio. They've seeded a little bit of pressure in that bot side river. Giant X have been able to walk in with Juhan and Ignar, but not really step too much further as Caps gets the wave shoved in once again. Broken Blade now backing. I wonder if he's got his next completed item. Two and a half thousand gold ahead in that top lane. He decides not to finish his recall and jumps back onto the Antonio for a little bit more chip damage. I think the G2 playing this smartly, patiently. Han Sama continues to get the push in mid. Corky just clears waves faster than Ezreal does, so you push in bot lane faster than he can, and every time you get one or two autos onto the bot lane tower, slowly chipping away at it. And Giant X, there's nothing for them to cross map, because Yone completely owns top lane. He doesn't just own top lane, like, you have to pay rent to even visit top lane. Like, it's, it's crazy how much agency this Yone gives in this matchup and it all comes back to what the AD was talking about, what we've talked about for Giant X, that their, their formula for draft is very predictable and if you have the depth of champion pool to punish it, this is exactly what you can run into. And it's unfortunate that Giant X just don't feel comfortable to try and punish on the map state, right? Broken Blade is continuously on that top end, but they end up not moving up towards the top side, instead continuously trying to contest on towards Dragon, so they kind of just watch bot lane disappear, watch Dragon disappear, watch the health bar on that top start to dwindle as well. So it feels like GX, they need to find something to start these plays off, but G2 are just never grouped up in a manner that gives them that chance. Yeah, I will say, in a meta where AD carries kind of dominates, the, the superstar playmaking uh, agency, I would argue, is taken away. You think about like Azia, Oriana, sure. Syndra, these mages have the ability to change the game off Nico a single play. Nico as well for Jackie's sure, was a huge thing. That's another yeah. great example. But when you're in an AD carry meta, I do think that in situations like this where you kind of feel the game slipping out of your hands, the ability to take the game into your own hands becomes a lot harder. Um, just because you don't have those playmaking tools. But I think that's what GX is trying to do now with the playmakers. Magnuson immediately onto Mickey. He tries to jump back in, but Giant X have found a pick. Ignar going in, as you say, that playmaking potential finally coming to the fore for Giant X. And that's exactly what I want to see Giant X do. You drop a wave on top, sure, you'll lose a couple of creeps, but you find that pick, you find a little bit more of that tempo to slow down G2. This tower will unfortunately die because of the Rift Tower on the top side, but you can at least try and defend now against Broken Blade because you've got numbers advantage on the map. Broken Blade for a second there, I think, was debating whether he takes the Rift Tower out, tries to charge away. Juhan is closing in on him. Mortal Steel is going to boot a little bit of damage as Juhan falls to half HP. Broken Blade dashing in, but he can't land the Q3. Juhan down to about 250 HP. Call of the Forge God coming out. Broken Blade will step to the side of it, but they still manage to lock him down for a second. The True Shot Barrage coming out as well. In the end, Broken Blade falls to the place. Juhan takes him, but Mickey, Flash Ignite, and a buckler to the back is enough to kill the brand. I love the Giant X are uh, trying to force these plays on the map. They get a good pick onto Mickey. They are able to punish Broken Blade on the top side, but 
G2's not the type of team that will just let you get away with that for free. They secure the bot tier two. They're keeping constant push in mid. Look at Mickey immediately back out onto the map and he's controlling it with vision. Giant X promising ideas, optimistic ways in trying to get back into the game. But unfortunately, in terms of control, every time they make a play like this, they just concede more of it. I think one of the major issues is like, against a team like G2 and the way G2 have been playing today is they don't give you the windows that other teams in the LEC would give you. Like Giant X grouped around bot side, G2 were looking at a possible dive onto Jackie's. It's like, well, if you go for that play, Giant X would have reacted well and they would have been able to shut you down and maybe get a couple of kills. But G2 have just played it so patiently and Giant X are probably feeling a little bit burnt from the last time they tried to tower dive this series where they all died as they went for that Cassante on the bot tier one. I think it's also just the trying to do too much with the, the time they have. They yeah. got the play on, on towards the pick. Just back away then, get your lanes out, push them out, take it slow and then try and slowly look for another window of opportunity like that again. But instead they just try to get this big sweep back into the game off that one pick and G2 are still strong enough that they're able to punish on a sideline to get that back. So the ideas are there for Giant X, it's just the next step. They just need to slow down on a not get too high beat. Well, it's only Caps. down for half HP as Caps chases him in. Valkyrie's away from the knockup. Mickey thanking the Baron as I believe it was Juhan who aggroed it and Mickey being in the pit. Takes about half his health, but Broken Blade has a lot of free time with a bot lane in the tier three. I'm going to say 3,000 gold lead for him as well. Immortal Shield Bow and the Blade of the Ruin Ruined King already complete. I mean, look at Caps. He's a full item ahead of Jankies. And now the Baron's being sided, and why not? G2 again can just play with their wallets, force Giant X to come into them. Juhan is in the area. Giant X have had a, they've done a good job of getting a ward just outside of the pit on both the Baron plays. They have had vision of it being started, even though G2 have tried to be sneaking around it. And now with the TP coming in, the Antonio has the call of the Forge God. Jackie's is yeeted the hell out of there. Call of the Forge God lands a double man knock up, but the Baron's already secured. And Giant X can't find the engage. No flash on Ignar makes it very tricky for them to get in. Ooh, oh, they go back in, flash forward by Yike, but immediately he dies. Broken Blade. Can he steal some fates here? Dashes back with the Soul Unbound, and Giant X have a man advantage. Juhan still has his ultimate, the Pyroclasm of Possibility. In the end, the Baron goes over to G2, but Yike does fall. I thought that G2 had kind of gotten away with it. Patrick spent a ton of time wandering back and forth around the edge of the pit, seeing if he could get that big setup with the ultimate, but just couldn't really get the follow-up. So G2 managed to step away, but Yike going that bit too far forward, and now Giant X again will get another dragon for themselves. Soul point for Giant X. Whether they can survive five minutes further to get towards that Ocean Soul and whether they'll be in a position to fight it at that time still remains a question. Hans Summer flashing forward underneath the turret. Juhan caught out down towards the bottom side as well. G2 find two more. And now Giant X with a numbers disadvantage on this Baron push. The wave shoving in. Broken Blade trying to dodge away with the Magnus Sword coming in. The True Shop Barrage has connected as well. Broken Blade dashes back in. The fate sealed on Jackie won't give him enough of a shield to get the kill in response. Broken Blade dies, G2 will take a tier three in mid and a tier three in bot. Giant X doing what they can to get something back, a foothold into this game, but G2 will not give them a moment's breath. They secure the mid inhibitor, they set their sights on the bot one, but they don't want to overstay their way. Welcome, Ignar and Antonio are here. The one ultimate, I believe, is almost off cooldown won't be available before G2 choose to reset. The damage has been done, the base is in tatters. That's a 10k gold difference once again, 25 minutes in. And every time Giant X find these small advantages, it feels like G2 just find an even bigger one. Yeah, they're just rinsing them the second that Giant X think they can take a sigh of relief. And now you've got mid and bot terror down. Realistically, you can just stick Broken Blade down there to take that bot inhibitor. It's kind of a false equivalency that it's still standing and then you get to move up towards this top end with the rest of G2 and put pressure onto the last remaining inhibitor turret. This feels again a very dire straits for Giant X in this game. It's like if uh, you know Giant X if David and Goliath. Sure. But if the Goliath won. <laughs> if it went the way you expected. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ironic, given their name, you know what I mean? That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> you can tell that I'm not the witty one of the two. No, you are witty. It's just that the puns <laughs> yeah. tend to escape you slightly. As this uh, game has escaped Giant X. Which is what we can put through their name after this series, as they will be out of contention. That was a Giant X pun. No, I got it. Yeah. No, no, no. Cool. Very clever. Nature's Gods coming out as his caps in the bottom lane. He's the one with TP, so he's the one who'll be resigned to playing PvE for the moment. Inhibitor Tower in the top lane falling, a 10,000 gold lead for G2. Cleanse away from Han Summer to get away from the slow, and it does enough for him to escape. But Caps opens up on the Nexus Towers, and G Giant X realize they got to defend two fronts at once. G2 push in once again. The Baron expired on them, but they have super minions pushing in bot and mid, and shortly you have to feel they'll have them in top as well. Caps keeping two waves shoved at once. Jackie's trying to answer him. Still a whole item disparity between those two mid laners. Mickey stepping forward. Call of the Forge got not available for the Antonio, but the Magnus Storm is for Ignar. Keeper's verdict out by Mickey. The inhibitor tower falls. G2 start to retreat. Jackie's unable to join his team as of yet, and no real engage available. But Giant X means that G2 can just walk away. I think what else is there really to say? Yeah. I think I like that this game can be summarized in terms of just a draft advantage that G2 is able to find, and they play through their lanes very well, but the kills are deceptive to how the game has really played out, because even though Giant X have been able to find picks, this has really just kind of been a, a macro situation where G2 have played through their side lanes, played through their push, and they've just had better map control and, and objective focus, so... Now with the base in tatters, Giant X are basically relying on not one, probably not even two. They're going to need three amazing back-to-back -back fights to be able to turn this game around. And I think it's a good indication of how important it is to look for cross maps, look for plays, because G2 consistently, it's, oh, you are on Dragon Coup, we're going to put pressure on towards the top side. We're going to look to get Broken Blade ahead. Oh, you're in a position where you're looking at Void Grubs, we're going to look for a potential dive onto bot lane and controlling the map in that way. Whereas for Giant X, they've kind of just been watching what G2 are up to, trying to decide, hey, can we actually fight this? And by the time they come to a decision, it's usually too late. G2 have already gotten out scot free, and now this game, it looks like it's going to end in G2's favor once more. Double supers in the top lane. We joined by their comrades in mid. TP away from the Antonio. Realized that he was going to be collapsed on. Keeper's verdict coming out. Nitch Scars hits one. Do you want able to dodge away from it? And Mickey's already down to 200 HP. The football of the Forge God hits the backline. Pyroclasm there to follow it up. And Hunt Summer might die. And in the blaze, he does. The dive in from Rogue Blade won't be enough to keep Giant X at bay. The Antonio face plants a wall. And Giant X will get one kill. They still have to try and delay the game. The Nexus Tower is the target of these minions. One has already fallen. G2 can continue to push up. Mickey doesn't have a war mug, so won't heal up on this poppy. The Giant X hold on to hope in the game. The soul in three seconds as well. I don't know how quickly they can deal with these creeps and get out. You have a TP from Jackie's. None for the Antonio, so looks like it won't be the case. G2 will be able to at least get the dragon on the way back out. But yes, you get a kill, but you're already losing in here, or Nexus turrets as well. It's still kind of G2 slowly closing this game out. Hey, if you want to be cup half full, you've bought yourself a few more minutes to farm. Uh, and getting a shutdown onto the Ash is definitely gold that you'll be happy to grab. Ultimately, I think this was an overforce. You'll see how much damage Mickey takes before the fight even starts off, turning it into a 4v5. The Chain TC comes down onto Han Summer. Nice stun connects from Juhan with a great stopwatch to follow up. He just executed that play very well. Uh, but now the Baron is back alive, and Giant X, yep. unfortunately, the downside of having all of this quote-unquote free farm is that it does mean that you don't really have any control over the map, making it hard to contest this objective. Nice attempt. Yeah. Jackie's seen to steal away, but not quite the case. And now, Baron up creeps. At least the mid-inhibitors respond. Silver lining, but oh. can they find a pick to try and push G2 back? You really need a miracle. You need something truly, truly special in this position to get back in the game. Pyroclasm up, Call of the Forge got four seconds away. Haven't really seen the bullet time combo that many times this game. The mid in hip re respawned. Patrick stepping quite far forward here. Broken Blade having that face sealed. It's a little bit precarious of a situation to be in. 
Giant X trying to clear out the wave. There's the call of the Porsche God from behind. The Antonio found the flank. They get onto Cavs and they'll shut him down. Mickey, the next target for Patrick. And on the back line, the stopwatch will stop the face seal from coming out. Bullet timing invested by Patrick, but Hans Summer's already killed off the brand. Patrick starts to open up and he's got a two level disadvantage and a big disadvantage when it comes to HP as well. It looked hopeful for a second for Giant X, but G2 will wipe them away. You can take Cavs, but you cannot take the win. 2 0, G2. Confident play from G2 once more. The combo could not work for Giant X and G2 just play out smarter on the map and make sure they keep control of this game. Ultimately, just uh, the macro difference I think is on full display right now. G2 know how to play the mid game, better lane assignments. They know how to play through their pushing lanes as well. Think about how difficult it was for Giant X to even cross map with Broken Blade creating so much pressure on the side lane. It really was. We'll see if Giant X can bounce back in game three right after this. The road that itself is crazy already from the beginning. I was in Czech League and I had a, even a contract for the next year there and I never expected to be here right now. I haven't really performed much on big stages yet. I've performed max against 5k people, which is not enough for Munich as I heard. So I have no idea, it's gonna be a new thing for me. It's for sure exciting and a bit nerve wracking, but I kind of enjoy the nerves in a way. For me, it's like a healthy thing because when I am under pressure, I tend to focus a bit more. We can be one of the surprises in the tournament, and I also think MDK can surprise. And the fact that I'm able to get to season finals with a roster that we changed in summer as well is a really crazy feeling. So I'm just excited what comes next. Hey, Law. Yeah? I need a bit of help with styling since I'm new here, and I was wondering if I could show you a couple of outfits. Yeah, sure. Amazing, thank you so much. I'll be right back. I'm a porro snack. Get it? I don't know, man. <laughs> Woo! Mm, no, not really. I don't know, Law. It's hopeless. No, it's gonna be fine. Here, let's have a break. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Back to the drawing board then, I guess. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings. Hey, shouldn't you be on stage right now? Yummy. Hey, you got a pick. What? I, I was not expecting this. And a crazy off-meta pink that secured you the win. How did you come up with it? Oh. Uh, I just listened to my gut. 